Today on our 2013 Lexus RX 350, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Curt Class 3 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver, part number C13143. So here's what our hitch is going to look like. It is going to be hidden pretty well behind the bumper and all we're really going to see is that receiver tube sticking out. It is a class 3 hitch, so it's going to give us that 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube opening and it's got a nice reinforced collar giving it added strength and just an overall finished look. Since it is a class 3, it's going to be a very versatile hitch. It's going to have plenty of accessories and different things that we can mount to it. Now the way we're going to mount all of our accessories is going to be through this pin hole here. You're going to be using a standard 5 8 pin and clip to secure all your accessories. Now the pin and clip is not included in our kit, but you can pick one up on our website using part number PC3. As far as the safety chain attachment points, we're going to have a loop style welded at the bottom of the receiver tube. And as you can see, we're not going to have too much trouble getting the hooks on or off. But you just want to keep in mind that they are directly in line with our pinholes. So if you are using a locking device, you just want to make sure and keep in mind that it might have a little bit of trouble interfering with that lock. As far as weight capacity goes, our hitch is going to have a 600 pound tongue weight along with a 4,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. Now it is designed to work with weight distribution systems and the tongue weight is going to stay the same but it's going to bump our gross trailer weight rating up to 5,000 pounds. With that in mind, I do recommend that you always double check your vehicle's owner's manual to make sure that your vehicle can handle that and you never exceed the manufacturer's recommended weight. I'd like to give you a few measurements and that's going to help you when deciding for accessories for your new hitch such as a ball mount, bike rack, or even a cargo carrier. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of the bumper, it's going to be right about 5 inches. And from the ground to the inside top edge of the receiver tube opening, that's going to be right about 16 inches. So now that we've seen what our hitch looks like, and going over some of the features, let's show you how to get it installed. To begin our installation, we're going to need to remove the plastic panel that's underneath the bottom of our vehicle. Now towards the driver's side, we're going to have a few plastic push pins we're going to take a flathead screwdriver we're going to come to that little cutout section around the edge and pop out the center and then the rest of the clip should come out. Now we're going to have one more right by the driver's side wheel and we'll do the same thing. We're going to have nine bolts holding our plastic panel in place as well. We're going to have a few on the very back here, and then along the edge, and right by our tire. Now there's also going to be two towards the front, kind of by the axle here, holding them in place. Now to remove those, I'm going to be using a 10 millimeter socket. Now on the side where the muffler is, we're going to have two plastic clips holding them in place. I'm going to take a rather large Phillips head screwdriver, and at the same time that I'm gently pulling down, I'm going to unthread those. And once we have these removed, we're going to go ahead and pull the panel out. And I do want to mention the actual clip itself is not going to come out, it's just going to release from the stud on the bottom of the pan. Now we did notice that there's another fastener holding it behind our wheel well liner here. So you're going to want to pull the wheel well liner away and again we're going to take a flathead screwdriver, pop out the center section and then pop out the remaining rest of the clip. Now we can pull the panel down. And we're going to set this aside so we won't get damaged. Now in order to give ourselves a little bit more working room, we're going to need to lower our exhaust down. So if we come to our muffler, we're going to find the rubber isolator and hanger. And I'm just going to take a little bit of spray lubricant and I'm going to spray it down, making it a little bit easier to pry that rubber isolator off. Your main goal here is just to get that isolator off the hanger. So you're going to grab a pry bar and pry that rubber off of the post and give yourself a little bit more working room. I'm just going to take 
a strap to support my exhaust so it doesn't fall down too far. And that hanger is going to be right by the axle right here. So we can get some more lubricant, spray it on there, and pop that off. Now, there's not a whole lot to pry on, but if you come right where the hanger's on the muffler, you can kind of wedge it in there, and then slowly pry off. And that'll give us just a little bit more working room to get our hitch in place. Now if we come to our frame rail, we're going to have our tow hooks, and then if we move forward just a bit, we're going to have two rubber plugs or a plastic plug. I'm going to take a flathead screwdriver, I'm going to pop that one out, and then the one further forward towards the axle, I'm going to unthread it. And if yours is getting stuck, just go ahead and grab a pair of pliers and pull it on out. Now we're going to do that for the other side as well. Our particular application, we have the F-Sport. So we're gonna have this extra support bar here attached to our tow hooks. So we're gonna need to grab a 14 millimeter socket and remove these two nuts on each side. We can go ahead and pull our support bar out. Now we are gonna set this aside because we will be reinstalling it, so we can go ahead and hold on to the hardware as well. The tow hooks are gonna to need to be removed as well. So I'm gonna grab a 17 millimeter socket and pull out the two bolts that are holding each one in place. On each side of the frame, we're gonna have three threaded holes. You're gonna to wanna to grab a bolt from our kit, make sure that they thread in there nicely, and if not, you're going to want to go ahead and clean those out, make sure there's no debris or anything in there. But since two of them had bolts in them, and one of them had a cover, they should all thread in nicely. And those three holes are going to be our mounting location for our hitch, and we can go over the hardware combination. We're going to grab one of the bolts in our kits, and we're going to follow it up with a conical tooth washer. And you're going to want to make sure that those teeth are facing up towards the hitch and we're going to go through our hitch and secure it into the frame. Now i got an extra set of hands to help me put my hitch in place. I'm going to raise it over the exhaust on the passenger side and you can see all of our mounting holes are going to line up in the frame and you're going to want to mount loosely one bolt on each side of the hitch just to hold it so it won't fall down. We're going to be using the furthest back hole because since ours is the F model, we're going to have a little bit more things to do. So since ours is the F model, we're going to have this plate that we're going to need to install. It's going to have two smaller holes kind of coming off to the side and then two longer holes on the long section. Now we're going to want that tab towards the back of our car facing towards the middle. Now we're going to take the corner section here, and we're going to take one of our bolts and we're going to pass it through. We're going to line it up with the hole on our hitch, and we're going to sandwich our hitch between this plate and the frame. And we just loosely secure it. Then we're going to take another one of our bolts and conical tooth washers and secure it into the forward mounting hole. Now on the other side, we can just put the rest of our hardware in place. So now we can grab that support bar and we're going to want to go over our exhaust. And this time when we install it, the studs are going to be going up instead of coming down. And we can take the factory nuts that we took off and reinstall them loosely. I'm going to come back with a 19 millimeter socket and I'm going to snug up all of my hitch hardware. Then using that same 19 millimeter socket, I'm going to torque down all of my hardware to the specified amount in the instructions. I'm going to repeat that for all the remaining hardware.
Now we can come back and we can tighten our support bar nuts. Now I'm going to be using a 14 millimeter ratcheting wrench since there's not a whole lot of clearance in between the hitch and the hardware. I'm going to get ready to put our exhaust back up. I'm going to spray a little bit more lubricant on the rubber hanger, making it a little bit easier to slide that post back inside. And then we can remove the strap. We are going to have to trim that lower body panel underneath our vehicle in order to get it back in place. Now I went ahead and marked out the location that we're going to need to trim. So if we come to the two sections here that have the cutouts, right in the center, there's going to be a little hump. Now if we measure, we're going to measure four and a half inches across by six inches long. That's going to be the section we need to cut out. So basically, if you come to this center hump here, you're going to cut that center hump out going straight up to where the crease is right here. Now if need be, we can always go a little bit bigger if it doesn't quite fit, but I'm going to go ahead and take a Dremel tool and I'm going to cut that section out. And we can always come back with a razor knife and clean up some of this melted plastic around the edge and take some rubbing alcohol to get that paint off as well. Now on the side of the panel here, we are going to have to do some trimming as well. This doesn't have to be exact and there's no exact measurements. We're just going to lose one of the attachment points towards the rear. And that's because of our support bar being in a different position and because of the hitch itself. The support bar actually is going to be going right here. So if we cut this section out, it'll make clearance and a room for it to be in place. So again, I'm just going to take a Dremel tool and just cut this section out. Now, if you don't have a Dremel tool, you can use a pair of tin snips, a razor knife or whatever, since this is just plastic. So you're going to want to test fit your plastic panel to make sure it fits around the hitch. And if you need to, you're going to want to cut any excess away that doesn't fit. But as you can see, we got plenty of room. We're not going to have to make any additional cuts. So we can go ahead and start working on putting all the fasteners back in place. So we're going to get the one that's in the wheel well first, just so we don't forget, and so we still have room and a little bit of play before we get the other fasteners in place. You're going to want to push in the outer ring and then lock it down by pushing in the center. That'll finish up our look at the Kurt Class 3 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver, part number C13143 on our 2013 Lexus RX 350. Thanks for watching and click the link in our description below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com. And leave us a comment if you have any questions.